Our guest this hour is Martin Jeroge. He's a programs officer at the Kenya Organic Agriculture Network. Let's have a conversation about agribusiness, about agriculture, about our food security. We call this AgriTalk on Spice FM in the Situation Room. Welcome to the Situation Room, Martin. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me here today. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blast having, getting to meet you yeah. last year. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kabisa, karibu yeah. sana. And we're glad that you're joining us. Everybody who's uh, tuned in this morning on Spice FM, online and KTN Home, let's have a conversation about uh, organic agriculture in the country. So the last time we had a conversation about organic agriculture, we, we learned a lot about what's happening in the country. There's a lot that's taking place in terms of organics. There are some people who missed on that conversation. So let's start by definitions. When we say organic mm -hmm. in uh, food production, what do we mean? Okay, organic is basically a farming system that avoids the use of synthetic chemicals as well. It's fair to the environment. It's fair to the people. It's also kind to the environment. And there's an aspect of health in there that's actually being promoted. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you're talking about organic, it's not just the food. It's how the food has been, has been grown. Mm -hmm. it's, how, it's how you are, you are treating your workers. It's how you are treating your environment. Are you actually destroying the environment in the process of growing your food? So, Okay, so if you, uh, just off the top of that, because that's very interesting that you talked yeah. about, is how you treat your people, the processes through which you go through to get to this end product. Exactly, yeah. So if you went out and did a survey, for example, and you're growing mangoes, right? Mm -hmm. And you find out that you are basically treating your employees akin to sweatshops, yeah. whereby they're working in you know unfavorable conditions. Would the end product then be less organic? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually the process itself. Okay. We are not looking at the product because a product can be anything. Mm -hmm. You can actually say you, are, you, you just brought your, your mango, the farmer is not using any chemicals, and that product is organic. But mm -hmm. if there has been a lot of injustice behind the product, mm -hmm. you can't really certify it organic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, the one thing that you've mentioned there, the non-use of synthetic chemicals yeah. is what many people would associate organic with. <clears throat> but the fact that I have not sprayed any synthetic chemicals on this, then it's organic. But you're talking about very many other things. Yeah. Um, there's, there's what you're saying, if you're not harming the environment, give us examples where you'd be growing your crop, you're not using synthetic chemicals, you actually are treating your workers very well, but you could be destroying the environment. Yeah, just, uh, uh, just off the top of my head, <laughs> if you go clear whole forest, just to put up a, a farm. <clears throat> what have you done? If you go drain a swamp, backfill the swamp, start growing your food, what have you done? You've mm -hmm. actually displaced some endemic species in order to grow your food. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's tantamount to destroying your environment because you've, you've actually displaced living creatures which have a right to be in that environment in order for you to profit, in order mm -hmm. for you to, to actually grow some food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like yeah, just doing it the traditional way. Traditionally, there's how uh, people used to grow their food. Yeah. They wouldn't in very much interfere with the swamps, with the wetlands. They would, I mean, have, they'd use children to <laughs> grow the food. But, you know, in the circumstances then were different. Yeah, true. But the, all those things, and then they didn't have synthetic um, fertilizers or synthetic uh, pesticides as well. So is, it that what, is that what we're talking about? It's, it's Let's go back to the traditional way of growing our food. Yeah, it's, you know, traditionally people respected the environment. Mm. In a sense, it wasn't something that you could have spoken about and said, but in a, in a subliminal way, the, 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 let me say, our, our ancestors respected the environment, they respected the processes that go through within the environment, and they were able to function within such environments and they were functioning actually they were thriving in, the, in those environments mm. and uh, the 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 problem has always been conflating organic with traditional because it sort of gives it a backward um, reputation mm. such that uh, this is probably one of the big the greatest critique when it comes to to people saying okay you can't do organic mm. they say that we are trying to get people back to to traditional ways you're trying we are not respecting the current science mm. we are we are trying to just uh, degrade what the current progress that has been made mm. and this is um i think it's more of a red herring in terms of uh, deflecting 
from the main message, which is, okay, we need to be really conscious about how we are growing our food. We need to respect the environment, respect the people in the process, and give a fair price for the food. Yeah. It's interesting you should say that, because when you talk about science, it is assumed that modern science is where science began. It didn't. Actually, yeah, true. Mankind has been living scientifically for the longest time, and it's the way they've been going about things that informed what then grew up and developed to be what we now call science, True. modern science. Yeah. You had people who understood you, how did we get to know when to plow, when to plant, when to harvest. Yeah. We had studied the, uh, the, uh, the ancestors, had studied the environment, mm -hmm. and they understood. How did they know how to interspace their crops? They had learned, they had understood. Yeah. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because part of the big problem we often have with the definition and understanding situations is a small matter of commerce. Yeah, true. Because the moment money-making enters a conversation, it, it never comes in as money-making. Mm. It always comes in as something beneficial for you, mm. which is better than what you already had. Yeah. And often not with sufficient uh, information to back it up. Again, when you say synthetic uh, chemicals, as a layman, you know what I hear? Fertilizer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking. Pesticides. Pes yeah, so at what point is it synthetic? At what point is it not synthetic? And how do you tell the difference? Okay. Uh, normally we have naturally occurring chemicals, mm -hmm. which are, um, they are allowed in organic because they are naturally occurring. Talk about pyrethrum, pyrethrin. Mm -hmm. These are naturally, naturally occurring substance. Mm -hmm. We also have minerals which are naturally occurring. You have things like uh, gypsum, you have things like uh, lime. This, you mine them directly. But the moment you take it through a chemical transformation or a process, you add a chemical to extract it. Sometimes you might add an acid to extract a specific uh, mineral. That one is automatically considered as synthetic. If it has to go through a chemical process where there may be byproducts which are formed, where probably, uh, you think about fertilizers nowadays, what we are sold as fertilizers, these are petrochemical products. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's this, this is all the oil, it's the oil industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, think about um, actually most, and that's why you find that uh, the, the, the biggest push for for what you're calling industrial farming came after the second world war because there were so many unused uh, let me say just uh, the bombs and and things like that mm -hmm. yeah th this is what was converted to to the current fertilizers and that's why even uh, when you when you see some of these uh, series and movies if if you if you are found to be buying some of these chemical fertilizers and things that you're flagged as a as a potential terrorism risk yeah, because these are, they are, they are the products that were actually formed, uh, they, that were actually extracted after an industry. But they perform, uh, yeah. a f they, there's yeah. a function they perform. Yes. I mean, um, when you're adding fertilizer, the synthetic yeah. fertilizer, there's what you're doing to the soil, to yeah. the minerals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're using synthetic pesticides, there's what you're, you're, you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Now, what are the alternatives? Okay. If if oh, your sorry. crop has been let's say infested by a certain weevils or, or what what are the alternatives organically that then you promote? Okay. Yeah. There there are alternatives and these alternatives it's it's never a direct alternative hmm. or what you say it's a one for one substitution hmm. because w when we are thinking about organic we are thinking about the process we are thinking about the mindset of the farmer hmm. because. As, as as cities has mentioned right now our our forefathers actually knew how to grow this food they actually knew how to look at the at the at the at the, at the processes that go on in the environment yeah. they could space their their produce appropriately they knew when to grow how to grow it and whenever something was coming up they knew how to to take care of that you see that's a whole mindset and this mindset has sort of being lost in mm. there in the translation mm. okay. as we're going towards organic <coughs> and going to directly now to your question it's that what we are advocating for is an integrated approach to pest and disease management soil yeah. fertility management because it's if you if you if i came here and told you that okay you need to convert to organic and i don't give you the 
the specific steps that you need to take when you're converting to what do, what should you actually observe yeah. when you're converting to to to, to organic, to organic. Mm. Uh, you know currently I'll say the current thought process in a farmer is that whenever I see a problem I want to destroy that problem yeah the the term is destroy it's yeah. not even control it's destroy if you see a, a pest you want to destroy you don't want to see it on your farm but when i'm thinking about more integrated approaches i'm thinking about okay this is here this is an indicative that this is an indication that there's an imbalance on my farm mm -hmm. how do i build up that imbalance yes there are products which you can come and control that particular pest or disease but the underlying issue is an, is that imbalance mm. and if you don't sort that if you don't sort out that imbalance eventually it's going to come back and it's going to come back multiple times multi trifold mm. yeah yeah so is this the push that we're trying to get uh, because if we're still looking at agriculture as such a huge huge um um uh, factor here right mm -hmm. is this the push that we are trying to get everybody involved on this organic line yeah why you you see it's all about having access to safe food mm -hmm. having access to l let me just say food that's not contaminated mm -hmm. because you you think about the just basic statistics um in um let me just i had written it down just for 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 not to be misquoted mm -hmm. we've actually had a 144% growth in level number of uh, quantity of inputs applied or bought in Kenya that is used on agricultural production. Mm. In 2018, we imported at least 156,000, uh, uh, 15,600 tons of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides. Mm -hmm. That is a very... It's a, it's a big increase from what was actually imported in 2014, which was just 6,400 tons. So it's more you than see, double. It's more than, yeah, it's more than double. Mm -hmm. It's actually triple. So and why? What does that, why, what, what does that put in? Be because, first of all, farmers have, have in, in, internalized the mindset that they need to use pesticides and herbicides yeah. to grow their food. Was there competing information? Because I, we always say that people... Uh, uh, like what they know people use what they know yeah what is available and what has been previously taught so there are two things is it that people have then um included or used then what is available or is it that there have been competing lines of information whereby this pesticide use which is harmful as you're saying has um taken over the organic conversation or the organic narrative which is it okay um Organic has always been on the back foot okay. because uh, essentially, you know, organic is not what you can say billion dollar business mm. in Kenya currently. Mm. Actually, the people who are making the most money in organic are exporters because they know that's where the, the market is actually going towards. Mm -hmm. And you find that a lot of even the flower companies, they are starting to use these integrated pest management approaches because they know their market, what their market is actually demanding. It's not the Kenyan market. It's the foreign market. It's demanding safer products for them. So you see what you are consuming here or the conversation for local production is actually more about mm -hmm. how can farmers buy more of these inputs. They have been conflated with better production. Mm. They have been conflated with high quality products. So eventually the farmer will pick up the message. Yep. You know, yeah. a farmer is a, is, a, is a human being. And a business person. Yeah. A business person. Yeah. But, but also, it's not really a deliberate, let me say, it's not a deliberate um, move on their end, actually. It's because conditioned. It's being conditioned into them. Just, just, uh, just, just switch on to any, any, any vernacular station. The first thing that's being marketed are these organic inputs? Oh, not the the non-organic inputs, the, the synthetic, synthetic inputs. Mm -hmm. It's it's so strong actually. You'd you'd be remiss to say that. How are they not buying even more of it? It's actually uh uh for me. Of course, if it tells yeah. you that you've used this, somebody uh saw their produce triple. Yeah, I'm gonna use it. 
Yeah. And the fact that it's out there on a publicly regulated media, that yeah. also means that it's also being sold in a regulated shop. It means that even the government ag agrees with this. Yeah. It means this is the way the world is going. Exactly. And you don't want to be left behind. Yeah. Now you come in now with your contrary information, start yeah. saying, you know, by, hold on. What will you be saying? Will you be saying, no, it's not true that the, after using these products, <coughs> the, pro the production is, is tripling? Or are you coming to say, yes, the production could be tripling, but then there are other consequences? I, I, what is I, your message? I would, I would, I would actually follow the, the latter mm -hmm. because there are always consequences. You know, there's that temporary boost in production, mm -hmm. which immediately plateaus and then it dips. You, you find uh, there, there are multiple studies that have been conducted, testing or, or uh, comparing organic systems of production mm. and some of these chemical-based systems of production. You find that in the long run, within the first, the first year, there's no competition. Conventional systems actually very, very productive within the first year. Mm. But when you come to the second, third, and su most successive years, you find that you need to actually apply more to get the same level of production mm -hmm. that you are getting within the first the first year. But when it comes to organic, you're slowly building up your, your potential. You're slowly actually harnessing the potential in the soil, mm. feeding the microorganisms. You know, it's all about a system of it's, it's ecology, we call it it's, all, it's ecology, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what you are doing, you're balancing out whatever is in the soil, and it's actually working for you. Because when, when you have a pest or disease incidence, mm -hmm. when, you are, when your products are not actually, uh, when your food is not growing as fast as you might want it to, it's because it's not accessing the nutrients yeah. in the soil. Yeah. And uh, some of these synthetic chemicals, what they do, they give it that... They boost it. They boost it. It's like taking sugar. Yeah. You get that jolt of sugar. You mm. get that sugar rush. But then you get the, the crash mm. event immediately. The same <laughs> thing with the soil. You, you have this... So the competing message here yeah. is everybody else is thinking, I mean, I'm in farming today to produce yeah. today. Yeah. I am, don't want to start thinking, okay, I'm going to be growing up my production over the next 10 years. Then, you know, maybe I'll double or triple or quadruple my uh, output in 10 years. I'm thinking yeah. today, how can I triple yeah. today? Yeah. They'll come up with a new product, which they'll bring, which will help me also deal with the crash. Yeah. So the competing message here is quite, quite, um, it, it's landing on some uh, serious ground here. Yeah. Because you're talking about it's the needs of today versus tomorrow versus telling me about some future there. You know, if you build up your soil's potential, if you allow the microorganisms in the soil to, if you allow your crop, if you do this, then maybe 10 years from today, you'll have done this. But Martin, I'm alive today. Yeah. I am in business today. Are there visible signs or uh, visible indications of harm uh, that one can demonstratively point to and say, you know, this is what happens when you focus on these synthetic products. It's actually, it's something that is, is it, the government actually released these results. No, um, yeah. Give us those results after this break. Let's take a break. It, it, 28 minutes after 8, yeah. we have in the studio with us Martin Jeroga. He's a program officer with the Kenya Organic Agriculture Network. We are talking about the emerging opportunities in organic agriculture in the country and in the region. So he'll tell us, first of all, we t we've been trying to understand and balance out between organic and um, synthetic. synthetic. And now he'll tell us, okay, what are those direct effects of synthetic and what are those direct benefits of organic visible? Before we took the break, City would ask Martin to list some of the harms you see when you want to talk about benefits uh, mm. it has to be vis-a-vis -vis something that isn't a benefit uh -huh. so here we are talking about synthetic products they eventually end up in the soil all right there are those who see the benefits because the yield is multiplied then there's a discussion that is introducing and telling us but you know something the damage that is doing to the soil mm. is almost uh beyond repair immeasurable so how is this manifested ha, 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 ha. what does one see when these negative consequences kick in okay um yeah in i think it was 2014 the government released some soil soil testing results mm. they were trying to to kick off a program 
in terms of uh, releasing fertilizer which is meant to to counter some of the problems the general overview was that soils in Kenya are acidic and this has been because of routine use of fertilizers yeah. which has actually lowered the pH of the soil mm. and this when when pH goes down there are some minerals or some uh, nutrients which are not available to the plants mm. because uh, it, it requires a specific pH range for a specific plant to acquire, mm. to access a specific nutrient. Mm -hmm. So when the pH goes down, this is no longer accessible to the plant. Mm -hmm. So the plant, uh, it, it, it actually struggles to grow. Mm. And uh, we, we've seen this, maize production, is, it, it has gone down mm. year on year on year, despite the fact that we are increasing acreage of land under con and under production mm. we are still seeing a lot of challenges in terms of, in terms of food production yeah. and uh, in terms of productivity of the of the land so are you saying that yeah. there is a direct relation between um reduced crop yield and synth use of increased synthet use of increased synthetic. use uh. of synthetic pesticides and such that's what the can data, you see can th you that's see what, that's, a direct relation that's what the data says mm. actually that's what the data says because we, we are using more we are using more inputs mm. we are using more pesticides but you're still having the same food insecurity aspects mm -hmm. issues that are coming up despite despite the fact that we are actually even now going to areas of uh, saying okay these inputs are no longer enough we mm. now need to go to gmos to to prop up to the, prop up the prop production, up the production. Mm. So but what was the recommendation of that report, the 2014 report? Uh, it was released by the Ministry of Agriculture? Yes, it was released by the Ministry of Agriculture. The what recommendation right? was that mm. farmers should actually work closely with extension service providers to improve their soil, uh, the, to, to reduce the this, this, this acidity, acidity in the soils. Mm. Yeah, and there was um, the, the kind of fertilizers they were providing, they were, had a high liming effect. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's when now they started promoting use of lime. Yes. Now, yes. if we were to go organic, yeah, what remedy can we can uh, organic deploy to the soil right now? Okay, liming is still allowed in okay. organic because lime is a naturally occurring mineral. Okay. In the in, uh, in yeah, we mine it directly. Mm. But also, we are talking about not looking at farming as a you don't looking don't look at it as a as a straightforward. You look at it as a system of of connected parts yeah. whereby if i'm growing something i need to i need to diversify my farm so that whatever i'm growing it's not i'm not actually relying on just one particular crop mm. i'm diversifying my investments mm. or my investments on the farm as well i'm trying to say that this i try to do what you call uh, it's called integrated pest management whereby i try to control the pests before they actually I try to prevent the the, the initial uh, pest harm. It, yeah pest harm mm. by putting in place measures which repel those pests. So if it's a if it's a crop that uh, if it's a if it's a pest that's attacking a particular crop, I'll try and plant another crop which is repelling that pest. Mm. So you find see, these things are occurring whereby you're growing onions, you're growing kales, you're growing different beans, you're growing. You're actually diversifying the farm, not for the basis of diversifying, but because these plants, in their own essence, they are repelling competing pests. Mm. So if uh, if I have a pest that's attacking onions, it's going to be repelled by something, a chemical that's produced by the beans. Mm. And yeah, Is it true or is it a myth then that organic farming or the processes of mm. going towards you know organic results are more expensive? Than using the synthetic option okay you have to define expensive in what sense costs more money it costs directly costs more money okay because it takes time to build up your mm -hmm. to build up your farm to get mm -hmm. that level of productivity mm -hmm. it definitely will cost you more i see what you're asking then yeah. because then you say at the end result then yeah. could, would it then cost you more if then you were ingesting foods that were not healthy and then you had to spend more money going to hospital and such like this exactly so those so when we're doing uh analysis then between yeah. the two in the long run then yeah. maybe is the question which is more expensive it's in the long run as well uh not only just the health effects mm. you're thinking about the investment on the farm mm -hmm. 
initially you are going to spend you say okay i'm going to spend a little money on the fertilizers a little money on the pesticides a little money on the fungicides herbicides and things like that but it's a downward hill mm. because eventually you have to spend more and more and more to maintain that level of production <coughs> we are talking about because that's the thing the thing is you get hooked mm. on the on the product and then you have to buy more of it as you go along yeah. mm -hmm. because that's the business model it's it's not it's not really much <laughs> about uh, it's about business yeah the 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 agrochem industry is uh, around 234 billion dollar industry is it because they really care so much about the farmer they want uh, it's i'm not going into conspiracy theories or things like that it's because the the way the system is designed is for the farmer to become dependent on products on product. mm -hmm. and then whenever when that product is not it's no longer effective mm. they launch another product and then they tell you oh don't look at this one look at this one now it's going to to safeguard you from this and this sort of uh, diseases mm. and you know the message of organic and that's why some people might find it not uh, not attractive because it doesn't really appeal to the business interests mm -hmm. of people Okay, you mentioned yeah. business interest, and I yeah. think this is very interesting because yeah. a few moments ago you talked about the fact that those who farm, for example, for export, are already on this organic train because they understand that the majority of the consumers on the other end of the pond are looking for organic food, and not just the results in terms of the food, but the processes. Are you making sure that everything that you do is organic in nature? Yeah. It is from these same countries that we are seeing a heavy insistence on these synthetic pesticides and fertilizers and things like that. Yeah how it seems like a dizzying balance you know, between the two it's you know uh unfortunately africa has to take care of africa kenya uh. has to take care of kenya because eventually even um when europe is banning pesticides they are not banning it for the benefit of africa they are banning it for the benefit of Themselves. europeans mm. so you still find the same companies which are manufacturing those banned chemicals they are selling it in kenya mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but insisting that the people on yeah. this other side use consume it, them. You, yeah, consume them, consume it because mm. it's a business. It's a business process. It's a business interest. Uh, eventually, you, we, 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 we need to move away from just thinking about, okay, uh, this is, this is assisting farmers to, to. You have to look at the underlying message. Mm. Are we? Are, are you creating a system of dependence or are you creating a system of independence? because if I, i can give three compelling reasons why we need to actually support organic inputs or organic organic production systems number one you safeguard the farmer you safeguard the consumer mm. no longer consuming pesticide uh -huh. number two we are creating more sustainable systems of production whereby even if our farmers are are, are using are, are going organic they're actually saving money and producing more mm. and producing higher quality food and uh, we are those adverse effects mm -hmm. those uh, confounding variables uh, where issues of health these are long term people will not see them immediately so in terms of response to that i can't really count on that as a as a compelling factor for them number three, we'll be promoting innovations here in kenya mm. because you find that you can easily make your own fertilizer you can easily make your own organic inputs package it and sell it to to people mm -hmm. here in Kenya mm -hmm. this is no longer a business that's only select select few who can do it you see out of the 166 companies which are selling synthetic inputs in Kenya over 90% of them are importing mm -hmm. these inputs that's a lot of forex you are losing mm -hmm. because of just buying inputs mm -hmm. but if you're able to be self sufficient here in Kenya and these are not really complicated in, in industries that ne require so much investment in terms of in terms of uh, setting up mm. just to make a bio fertilizer you just need a drum mm. a plastic drum and a few and a few i mean uh, a few a few ingredients here and there and mm. you can grow those ingredients we are seeing whole industries set up in moya set up in akuru just to do the same same thing okay and you know it's it's a low entry it's a low entry sort of engagement and this actually empowers the local people you're not you're not you're not talking about at uh, getting 
you are importing it has it goes through a whole process you just think about the whole carbon emissions even if you are going to go into that sort of argument we are using local products we are using local expertise we are selling to local people mm. we are retaining the money within our own economies and what's that what's is, so wrong about that message yeah no the the, the message is f fantastic yeah what i'd like to know is even as we talk about the messaging and the competing interests yeah there must be some individuals who are involved in farming who have taken up this mantra of organic farming yes where do we see them where are the examples and how is it catching on within the country okay there are actually so many of them there's mm. so many mention of them two big ones who when you mention i say i will know <coughs> how are these ones i've heard of uh, you know finlays mm. yeah finlays are known for tea yes and flowers yes yes they are going organic this is somebody you know this is somebody you actually you can associate with and this is a huge industry mm. yeah they are going organic mm -hmm. they've always had a line of organic tea mm. Mm. yeah all right now at a local level a farmer who is essentially subsistence because remember the backbone yeah. of a lot of our food yeah. is subsistence farming yeah. or small yeah. scale farmers yeah where have you seen this uptake and where is organic farming catching on and where are we getting produce that is actually getting into the market and feeding <clears throat> kenyans okay i've been working with two specific groups of farmers yes one in moranga one in machakos mm. the moranga farmers they are in kangare and they are also in gatanga mm -hmm. and sabasaba mm -hmm. they already they are growing their own organic food they are selling to their local people they are actually having an organic market existing within the main market mm. and people they yeah. they are out competing the the other sellers mm. in the market in the market how many farmers in that group there are around 150 farmers 20 of them are directly participating in the in the farmers market mm. those 150 farmers they are supplying shops like uh, the corner shop mm. they are supplying yeah it's it's what uh, no, it's, I, I, I was I was drawing a Google yeah. map in my head yeah. to, right. to figure out where the corner shop is. Okay. Yeah, carry on, Sylvia's yeah. Basket yeah. along Gong Road. Yeah, we have uh, Kalimoni Greens. Mm. We have Bridges Organic Restaurant. Mm. These are they are their main supplying farmers, and and they are they are actually making money out of this. Uh, this they are making a lot of money from from growing organic and also even the the the. I'm saying just that aspect that they are selling to their own people. Mm. They are selling There's already to their a community people. that's growing. Yeah, the community is growing. And they're very, very passionate. For example, I know about Sylvia's Basket. Yeah. And Sylvia is one of those who's very passionate. She always even con uh, creates content on organic farming, sharing about organic farming. Yeah. So if you look at now that group that you're just giving us, the example yeah. of Moranga Farmers. Yeah. You said 100 and how many? 50? 150. 150 yes. of them. Yes. Around, if you look at their combined acreage. Yeah. Uh, how many acres are we talking about and how many different uh, items are they producing we are talking around about around uh, 90 acres mm -hmm. 90 acres of land in machakos it's around uh, 230 acres of land because machakos landhold sizes are generally bigger, bigger. yeah yeah so uh, come back and again the produce the, the produce the different pro the products that they're bringing to the market okay these what are, are they growing yeah they are they are growing the the local vegetables these are the kale skumawiki managu terere mm -hmm. they're also doing a lot of fruits danias uh, yeah it's it's the whole it's the whole, uh, the whole veg, yeah the whole veg, uh, the whole veggie basket okay yeah you know as i listen to that um it brings me back to a conversation that we once had and somebody said Organic farming is more for the smallholder farmers. The large-scale farmers, we don't hear them going into organic farming. Is it true or is it not? Uh, organ large-scale organic farming has its own challenges mm -hmm. because it's also something we say it's it will work, but it takes a lot more investment in terms of it's how more to. Expensive it's it's more expensive to 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 tailor your system mm -hmm. towards an organic production method. You know, you know, this is actually almost counter counterintuitive. Mm. Yeah, because small scale farmers do it right. They are many, but they are small scale. Yeah. Now, economies of scale ought to work here. Large farm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Apply the same. And then suddenly, <clears throat> the report is that the opposite is actually true. It becomes more expensive. Break this down for us, please. Number one, the biggest issue in organic is labor labor because we are we are we are we are not using herbicides you know when it comes to controlling of of uh, of weeds that's the biggest challenge uh -huh. if you are doing it on one acre 
you can easily do it. If you are doing it on 100, 1,000 acres, it now becomes a, a significant issue. And uh, when the levels of mechanization... And it cannot be me mechanized. It, it can be mechanized. Okay. It can be, it's allowed to be mechanized, actually. Okay. It's only that here in Kenya, the, that level of mechanization is not... Available. Is not available. Is it okay. very expensive? It is. It is expensive. It is expensive. So the alternate now is human labor. Yeah, human is labor, it? but it's also creating employment. Yes, but is that very expensive? No, not expensive. So again, the expense. Not expensive. Not expensive. Yes, but because we have a lot of labor in this country. Yeah. You see, you're yeah. comparing that city to employing uh, X number of people to just buying one product mm. and using it. Mm. So costs, the product will be cheaper, the synthetic product. That will control the weed will be cheaper for it you will be. than if you went and you know started bringing in people into the farm and all yeah it it would be mm. it would be and again the discussion now revolves around commerce mm. what we're talking about here is what we um what martin has mentioned as the synthetic aspect of this business enables you to realize cash quickly yes with the minimum outlay of capital on these other things. And I'm saying, yes, I get it. I get it. But is there no balance where, because, you know, we've now gotten into the discussion of should something be capital intensive or labor intensive? Yeah. Now, it's, it's now an economic discussion. Yeah. And, and uh, I think also we are, we are sort of uh, getting distracted a bit mm. because essentially it's smallholder farmers who feed Kenya. Yep. It's not the large scale farmers. It's the smallholder farmers who feed Kenya. Over seventy percent of the food that is consumed in Kenya is sourced from smallholder farmers. Mm. So that is who I would rather concentrate on, because they are the ones who are consuming most of these synthetic inputs, because they are the ones who are applying it. And you know, the the, the problem has always been, uh, you you say that this uh, this you can you can use precautionary principle, the the PPEs and things like that. I have a farm myself. My neighbor. Is a conventional farmer. Yep. The way they, I see them doing the work, I try and have a discussion. But you see, it's all about the motivation to get the money as quick as possible, and yeah. then you move on. And, and then you move on. Again, yeah. You move on. You see, for me, it's a mindset which somehow, some way, mm. we need to start having these conversations to 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 look at the longer term impacts of 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 the use of these chemicals because it's really, if you just look at just the basic statistics. Mm. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can actually draw your own conclusions. 24 of the products in Kenya, they are carcinogenic. Sorry? Carcinogenic. They mm. cause cancer. 24 products. Yes, yes, they've yes. been proven. Oh. proven. Mm. 35 are endocrine disruptors. These actually interfere with your hormones, male and female hormones. Mm -hmm. You don't know how they express itself. 140 products are neurotoxic. You get dizziness you get the shakes you get different things and then 262 products in kenya they are reproductively they have been shown to have reproductive impact you know this is i i normally mention that particular statistic and everybody in the room sort of keeps quiet because yeah. it actually <laughs> You, you, you understand yeah, why? In a Sumbua Uzaz. In a Yeah. You know, the moment you mention that one, now people start yeah. listening. Yeah. 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 The 262 products. Those are many. Those are many. Do you Those have a sense, many. Martin, yeah. that for this conversation, then even to gain more um, traction, yeah. we need to focus on the consumer. Yes. Because the consumer is one that creates demand. If that demand from the consumer demands mm. organic, yeah. then the farmer will then be motivated to grow organic. Yeah. Uh, because if you go and concentrate on the farmer, if the farmer is looking at, this is going to cost me X, this is mm. going to cost me Y. And when I go to the market, it's going to be more expensive anyway yeah. Yeah. to sell yeah. my organic yeah. than it's going to be to sell the conventional one. Yeah. So I'm just going to go with the conventional because market wants con market does not mind conventional. Yes. Mm. What efforts have you made to make to create consumer awareness on the benefits of organic? Okay, number one, um, we have regular outreach activities with communities, especially in um, in farming communities, because they are the first consumers there, mm. and they are the ones who can actually uh, compel the farmers to to have more sustainable practices on their farms. Mm. 
We also have, um, uh, we have campaigns, advocacy campaigns. Right now, we, we tabled a bill to parliament on withdrawal of some of these banned substances, which mm -hmm. have been banned in Europe. And we, we want them to also be banned here in Kenya because it only, it's only fair if, if it's not good for them, it's yep. not good it's for, good for, for us. us. It's not good for the Ganda. For the yeah, duck. yeah, it's only fair, fair enough. As well, we right now we we are we are going into another phase of what you call social media influencing, mm. where we want to leverage the power of social media to try and to 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 inform consumers on how to make the right decision when it comes to their food, because food is not just about eating; it's about nutrition, it's mm -hmm. about safety, it's mm -hmm. about health and well-being. Mm. It's all about you know, your let thy food be thy medicine. You know, that's mm. a that's a common that's a common say. Let thy food be thy medicine. Yeah. If you're eating poison, probably your life will not be as as productive as you might want it to be. Mm -hmm. mm. If you're eating um, contaminated, but if you're eating healthy food, you you've seen you've seen people who have already transformed their lives just because of the food they are eating. Yeah. yeah. And if you are able to access this healthy food, it's actually. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. I've seen people who have transformed their lives negatively <laughs> yeah. because of the food they eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's uh, the, the f and it's, the conversation is always about food. Food. Yeah. You've had your breakfast. You had your dinner yesterday. If mm. you're so fortunate, your lunch, mm. your snacks. This is all about food. Yep. It's all about food, food, and that's why I, some of the players are very silent because eventually you'll have to come to them. Mm. You'll have to come to them. Mm. The farmers are overlooked in the conversation. Mm. What are the farmers saying about it? Nobody wants to feed you poison deliberately. Yeah. But it's, they are compelled because of commercial reasons yeah. to be able to, to start uh, to boost productivity on their farm. And that message is being sold over and over again. Mm. You've seen the impact of uh, what's it called? Uh, subliminal messaging, as mm. you are saying. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're confronted by the same message over and over again, over and over again, your your perception your changes. Yes. Yeah, it shifts you. The, you move the needle a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, and then eventually, you are actually you're you're spewing out the same thing <laughs> that the you're message is. You're radicalized. You're radical. It's the, it's about <laughs> ideology actually. Martin, thank yeah. you very much for joining yeah. us. Martin Jeroge is a program officer with the Kenya Organic Agriculture Network. We've been talking about the emerging opportunities in organic agriculture. Joe's Fresh Farm in Kisumu says, I'm a proud organic farmer. Farming organic is plainly food production. I don't do it for money per se, but to produce healthy, safe, nutritious food, not a commodity for financial gain. And uh, Joe's Fresh Farm is usually very, very active and a uh, very good listener of our show. It's good to hear that that's what you're doing, Joe. Asante Sana Martin. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.